Hey guys, so today we're looking at the paper Electra, pre-training text encoders as discriminators rather than generators by a bunch of authors from Stanford University and the Google Brain team. Pre-training objectives has been very popular in natural language processing in last years. The basic idea is to um, take a, la a large data set of raw text, apply some sort of a um, noise objective to that text like masking tokens or something like that, and training models to predict the missing information or to correct the information. And you're able to get um, features which are very useful to then be fine-tuned on a wide range of downstream uh, natural language processing tasks like classification or even text generation. Some popular pre-training objectives include the mask language modeling objective introduced by the BERT and Roberta Paper, the Roberta paper is building up upon a BERT, um, where the basic idea is you're having um, raw text like my dog is hairy and you're applying some, um, basically re replacing certain tokens with a special mask token. Uh, and you're inputting this mask sequence into, the, into a large transformer network. Um, and then you're asking the model to predict what is the most likely word that needs to be, uh, that goes into this location which is hairy in this case. And uh, pre-training has been very effective using this approach. Another one that is also used in the BERT and Roberta papers is the next sentence prediction um, objective. There you are given two sentences instead of a single one, like um, the man went to mask store, followed by a special separator token for sentence separation. Then he then you have, he bought a gallon mask milk. And then you're asking the model to predict whether the second sentence is following naturally the first sentence, uh, outputting a special is next or is not next token. This also has been shown to work um, nicely. Another one has been used in this ExcelNet paper, which is a little bit more recent. There you're doing a permutation type of language modeling um, objective. Basically, for each um, possible word, in our example, my dog is hairy, you're trying to predict um, the word given the other words. So from my dog is, you're trying to predict hairy. From dog is hairy, you're trying to predict my. From my is hairy, you're trying to predict dog, and so on and so forth. So this is extending it a little bit in the sense that you are predicting every single word from the input sequence and not just individual masked words. And this has also been shown to work pretty well. But um, one uh, crucial point um, moving on to our paper for today is that um, kind of most of those objectives are, uh, not, are, are generative in the, in the sense that you're trying to predict um, words spanning your whole vocabulary, which could range 50,000 tokens, let's say, or more. Um, so you're trying to generate a, a word rather than trying to, for example, distinguish which word is um, corrupted or something like that. And this is precisely where we move into the current paper, um, Electra, where they introduce a new type of pre-training objective called the replaced token detection objective. So how does this work? Um, we actually have two models, part of this Electra approach. Um, you have a um, generator and a discriminator. So given that you have a input sentence like the chef cooked the meal, the first step is actually to mask some of those words at random and then to input those, this corrupted or like masked sequence into a generator network, which is a um, small mass language model similar to BERT. So this generator is gonna be predicting uh, is going to be predicting replacements for those masked words. Like for example, maybe it makes a correct prediction like D um, instead of mask, first token here, or it predicts eight instead of this masked token, which is different from cooked. And this generator network, you can think of it as producing as some sort of a corrupted version of the input sequence, the, the chef cooked the meal. Then this corrupted sequences, sequence is inputted to a second network, a discriminator, which is the core of the Electra model um, 
which then tries to predict for each word in this sequence whether it is original coming from the original sequence or whether it has been replaced by the generator. So in this case you have to predict that V and Chef are original but 8 is, has been replaced um, so it is the corrupted word basically. And this might be useful because um, the, the model is learning to basically understand the language to be able to figure out that actually okay chefs typically don't really eat um, their meals the meals they are typically cooking so perhaps um, aid is not really fitting in in the current context and this kind of gives you a brief overview of this um, electro approach the generator and the discriminator are trained jointly um, together on again on large amounts of raw text and then once you pre-train using this um, objective you are taking the discriminator only the features learned and then you're using them similar to BERT, Roberta, Excelnet you're taking them and then you're fine-tuning them on some classification or whatever task some natural, natural language understanding task so to give you a little bit of a more intuition or some more details into how this is trained you're yeah, actually using a maximum likelihood training objective um, um, come training jointly the mass language model and the uh, discriminator network together um, given each example x in the training data set the mass language, mo mass language modeling objective is similar to how BERT works basically you're trying to find the most likely replacements for the mask tokens um, for each masked word um, whereas for the discriminator you're actually doing a, some sort of a classification style where you are trying to detect the corrupted words um, or the uh, words that are original and you're doing this joint training this is actually a little bit similar um, the setup of the two networks is similar to the way uh, GANs work but they're using this maximum likelihood training which seems to work um, better than uh, some sort of adversarial training which they do try but this gives you a quick overview of how this works the authors actually do a lot of uh, different experiments trying to figure out first of all what um, model sizes work best for the um, generator and the discriminator networks and also how does the uh, performance of this Electra work um, as you train more and more and more steps and is it more efficient to, to train an Electra model than a BERT model so if we look at some of those interesting plots um, here we have uh, the size of the generator network uh, in terms of number of hidden units versus the um, this is in the x-axis um, in y-axis you have the glue score um, where glue is a natural language understanding benchmark where higher score is better and in color you have plotted different sizes of discriminators um, from large ones using 778 uh, 60, 68 uh, parameters to small ones here in green and basically um, it seems that a good trade-off is actually achieved if you're using a um, much smaller generator than discriminator 128 or so uh, for, the, for the generator and 700 for the discriminator which is very interesting and the way I explain this to myself is actually perhaps having a really good generator is maybe not really useful for then fine-tuning this discriminator because you want some noise in your generator to be able to generate interesting um, corrupted sequences that are then useful for, for uh, the discriminator on the right hand side you have um, as I said some comparison of training compute number of training steps um, on the x-axis versus the glue score for the mainly for the Electra let's look at that one and the BERT here in green and basically what they find consistently throughout this paper is that you're getting more out of your compute using Electra than with BERT so Electra is achieving higher glue score um, with much less compute versus um, BERT 
And this is good news for us that maybe have um, only one or maybe four much fewer number of GPUs because you could be pre-training this Electra in much, much less number of training steps to get similar accuracy as um, BERT. We also have some comparisons in terms of testing very small or very large architectures. Here in this table, we have small architectures ranging from 14 million parameters to 110 million parameters. We have some bird small models or bird based models with 14 and 110 million. And we have a comparison of Electra models um, of similar sizes. And basically one interesting thing that they find out in this results is that um, actually using the Electra small with only 12% of the training steps and compared to the BERT small model, um, which is a, um, what is that like? I don't know what X is that, but basically with this um, much less number of training steps, we're able to outperform the BERT model trained on the full number of training steps. Um, in terms of glue score. And um, when going in, uh, going to the electro base model with 110 million parameters, you're again outperforming the uh, bird base model with, um, which has been trained on similar number of training steps. So it seems that indeed the electro base model is not only outperforming the bird base model sometimes, but even doing it um, when trained on less number of steps. If we look at some big model comparison using models that have 330 million parameters or so, uh, compared on a bunch of other um, benchmarks, we have um, a comparison of BERT Roberta and ExcelNet trained on different number of training steps here. And actually it seems that, um, so using the Electra, trained on 1.75 million training steps, yeah, which is comparable to uh, the training steps of the ExcelNet, which is kind of like one state of the art um, embedding model or representation learning model. You're getting a better performance um, than the ExcelNet with smaller training time. So you're getting like on average um, 0 0.4 improvement in accuracy and uh, typically large higher performance across those benchmarks. And more interestingly, actually, if you go to um, the Electra model trained on small, smaller number, only 400,000 training steps, you're getting a, a comparable performance with the um, ExcelDet um, model, almost the same but you're getting like a, what is this? Um, you're getting like a five X speed up. So for five, five times less amount of training time, you're getting the same performance as ExoNet, which is very good, very nice. And also you are, I think you're faster also than uh, Roberta as well, the large one, which is uh, 4.5 X slower than the Electra 400K. So this again confirms that Electra is um, perhaps more suitable, it get, gets similar uh, or better accuracy than state-of-the-art embedding models, but using less compute. And um, I think even in the paper, they even talk about that you could even train it on one GPU or so, or even on CPU. I don't know too much about that, but there's some interesting, interesting details about that in the paper. So those are the main things that I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for some more upcoming NLP content.